Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the Discriminating Gamer. You know, I have a real fear of elevators, but I'm taking steps to avoid them. Ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to go ahead and take a look at this 10 list. It's not a top 10 because I'm not really going to rank them, but I want to look at 10 games that were killed by other games. <laughs> Hello everybody, we'll get back to the review in just a second. I just want to take a moment to ask you to go ahead and check out and subscribe to my other channel, that is Cody Carlson PhD, where we talk about military history and books on history and fun things like that. Please check that out, please subscribe, and now, back to the review. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so we're going to look at uh, 10 games that were killed by other games. Now again, I... I I kind of came up with this because I can't see myself playing these games anymore because other games have come along, they do what that game did, but do it better, do it smarter, and I have more fun with it. So I can't really see myself playing those other games. I still have some of these games in my collection. I'll probably get rid of them eventually. And other games, I don't know. Um, I'm still kind of looking at the whole Unfathomable Battlestar. They kind of do the same thing, but I can't see getting rid of both of them. Um, and maybe it's just a theme thing and I'm being stupid. But I'm hanging on to both of them right now, so neither one's killed another one there. Um, there's other games that are very similar, like uh, Clash of Cultures and Civilization of New Dawn. I really like them both. I can't see myself getting rid of either one of those right now. There's various war games that are similar. There's just a lot of stuff, you know, Commands and Colors Napoleonics, Commands and Colors Samurai Battles. These games, I don't know. I'm comfortable with keeping both because I don't think one has really killed another one. But let's go ahead and take a look at 10 games that I think did. Now, again, not ranking them. Just, just here they are. So the first one I want to talk about is um, Mysterium was a fun game. I liked to play Mysterium. Um, it didn't wow me the first time I played it, but it kind of grew on me. But then I played Obscurio, and Obscurio killed Mysterium. Um, Obscurio, I liked it a lot better because it still got that guessing aspect with the ghost and the images and whatnot. But with, Mis with Obscurio, you have the hidden traitor element. And I'm always a big fan of hidden trader elements when they're incorporated into board games. Um, of course, speaking of Unfathomable and Battlestar Galactica, um, it's just a fun mechanic, and it's done really well there. I like Mysterium, but Obscurio, I mean, there's no contest for me. I'd much rather play Obscurio than Mysterium. So that is the first one that I'm going to mention today. The next one I'm going to mention is... Um, I really, really liked Thunder Alley from GMT. This was a great racing game uh, that I, I really liked it a lot. But Thunder Alley has been killed by Apocalypse Road. Apocalypse Road, is it's kind of the same game, but it's better because you can shoot at each other. It's post-apocalyptic, and your cars have guns. Now, both games are great. You're playing, you're, you have these like series of cars, these teams of cars, and you play cards to move... Uh, your cars in various sections and when you move you're moving other people's cars as well so everybody's paying attention because all these things are, are being moved around but like I say I prefer Apocalypse Road because of the um, because of the the guns and the fact you can shoot and have more fun that way a little bit more chaos and carnage that you can have I actually ended up giving my copy of Thunder Road to Zach I still don't think he's played it yet uh, Thunder Rally they're both great games but Apocalypse Road given the choice I'm always gonna go with Apocalypse Road so that is uh, Apocalypse Road kills uh, Thunder Alley, both from GMT Games. Another one is, this is a game that just came out recently. Well, the original game, the game that was killed, is a game that came out uh, oh, five or six years ago. And it was based on one of my favorite TV shows at the time. It's still a great TV show. And that's Sons of Anarchy, Men and Mayhem. Sons of Anarchy, Men and Mayhem was a great game. It was kind of a hybrid of Euro and, and Ameritrash. You had direct confrontation, but it was also kind of worker placement. Really liked this game. But uh, Gale Force 9 earlier this year came out with Wise Guys, which is essentially Sons of Anarchy re-skinned, re-themed. And there's a few other little tweaks to the rules. It's a little bit of a tighter game. But I just, I liked it better. As much as I like the theme and the IP for Sons of Anarchy, I really like kind of the Prohibition era gangsters of, I, I just th think like the theme fits a little bit better here. But crit more critically too, um, you, your guys, it's not just a matter of sending dudes and sending your, you, you know, your guys to these fights. You have some stats that, that they matter, that your different characters have stats that matter. So for that reason, um, I'm going to have... Uh, uh, Wise Guys beat Sons of Anarchy. They're both from Gale Force 9, both great games, but I can't see myself playing Sons of Anarchy again. Next up, I was a big fan. I first played the Resistance Avalon in 2014, I think. 
And we did a live, we actually, not a live one, but we did a, a session of that on the channel years ago. And Resistance Avalon is a fun game. Great secret hidden trader game. Great deduction game. Really enjoyed it a lot. Um, but I find when I'm playing a, a, a hidden trader game, like just a simple card hidden trader game, to me, there's nothing better than Secret Hitler. Secret Hitler is just so fun and goofy, and it, the paranoia, it, it seems like it's even heightened. I don't know how or why, but I, Secret Hitler to me is just the go-to hidden trader light card game. If you want to play a game with hidden traders, um, you know, and you don't want to play a Battlestar Galactica or something, you just want to play some of the with cards you got you got a lot of people because it plays up to 10 and the ideal way to play this game is with 10 uh, i highly recommend it i actually was able to conv convince a professor of mine when i was in graduate school to, to let us play this one day in a foreign policy class it was so much fun we had a great time um but secret hitler kills resistance avalon several years ago to another uh, game i played um at the time it was produced by idw and that was uh, marchicaro i think they've got a, a new publisher now marchicaro is a great game i haven't played they've got like the second edition or something i haven't played that but Machikaro was a lot of fun. You're building up the city, you're rolling die, you're all paying attention to the die, what the die does because it may trigger some of your, your city. Um, but then Space Base came out, and Space Base kills Machikaro. Uh, I still own Machikaro, and I, I, I don't know, I might play it at some point, but I'd so much rather play Space Base. Space Base just kind of scratches that same itch, but it does it, it, it feels like it's a tighter game, it's a cleaner game. And the theme is, I think, a little bit more fun. Plus, it's fun with the cards where you flip them upside down after you spend them. Um, I, I really like it. Every time I play, I don't think I've ever played Space Space with anybody that didn't like it. I remember we were down at uh, game -a -thon with Chris one time, and his daughter Haley was playing it with us. And she, she kind of didn't want to play. It was kind of like we needed someone else to play with us. And she's kind of like, all right, I'll play with you guys. And she ended up loving that game. She really got a kick out of it. And everybody I played this game with, does everybody I play with loves Space Base? It's just goofy fun. So that is a Space Base uh, from AEG killed Machikaro, uh, originally from IDW. My favorite games from my young adult years. You know, when I was about twenty years old. For about four or five years, I just played this game all the time. It was like Axis and Allies and Diplomacy. I played Diplomacy a ton. I love Diplomacy. And Diplomacy, of course, is the game where you lose friends, right? Because it's brutal. It is brutal. Um, and it's a fun game, but it's a long game. And I really liked it, uh, but I haven't played it in years. And I still own it, and I still own Colonial Diplomacy, too. And again, it's games, games I have a hard time parting with. But they, uh, I, I haven't played them. Because when I want to play a game like that, I play Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones, the board game, second edition from Fantasy Flight is freaking awesome. Now, Diplomacy, of course, was, was made in the 50s, and Christian Peterson, when he designed Game of Thrones, the board game, essentially he took the mechanics and updated them, and then, of course, fitted them to the, to the Game of Thrones theme. But you still, it still scratches that itch of alliances and that idea of, of, in order to win, we have to work together, we have to form blocks to work together, but as soon as one guy starts getting a little too, too far ahead, the other blocks kind of conspire against him and take him down. It's still got that same thing, it's still got the simultaneous orders, uh, all those things kind of play out more or less the same way. Um, I mean, with, there, there's differences, but, but basically it's the same, and it still scratches that same itch. I just can't see myself playing Diplomacy again. Maybe one day I will, but honestly, with, uh, with Game of Thrones, I, I, I think I'd take it over Diplomacy just about any day. So a Game of Thrones 2nd Edition from Fantasy Flight Games kills Diplomacy. Now this one's probably going to be a little controversial, because some people would say the games aren't mechanically very similar. I think thematically the, it, it, they're similar. And to me, I get, I kind of get the same feeling from these games, but I just think the one game does it better. The game that I'm saying is being killed is Churchill. Now, I like Churchill. I thought it was fun, but it's a heavy game. I actually gave this game away a while ago because I never got it at the table. And and I, and, and I, and I kind of felt bad for a long time, and I kind of missed it for a long time. But I don't miss it now since I've got this other game. And the game that killed it is Versailles 1919. Versailles 1919, and they're both by Mark Herman, both GMT games, both by Mark Herman. Um, and Jeff Engelstein did, Mark Herman and Jeff Engelstein did uh, 19, Versailles 1919. 
But Versailles 1919, I get that same idea of we're at conferences and we're negotiating over issues. But it's cleaner, it's simpler, it's lighter, it's easier to get to the table. It's just, it gives you that same feeling of, of, of the conferences, but it does it in a better way, a more rewarding way, a more impactful way. Now, I love long games. And Churchill's a long game if, you let it, if you're playing the whole thing. I love long games. But if I can get the same feeling from a really long game in a shorter amount of time, which is not easy to do, because sometimes the appeal of the longer games is it, these games take time to unfold. But if you can get that same feeling from a really long game in a short game, then do it, you know? And that's the feeling I get with Versailles 1919. I really love Versailles 1919. And so uh, Versailles 1919 kills Churchill. Next up, um, years ago, when I was first getting into the wider world of gaming, um, there was a, uh, uh, somebody told me about this horror-themed game called Last Night on Earth. And I thought it sounded silly because I was still kind of had the mindset of the games you play, board games you play, are supposed to be about war. I mean, I, I like light war games. or games that some, in some ways revolved around war, like Diplomacy or, or Axis and Allies. And I'm just starting to come out of that. And somebody says, like, a zombie game? A board game about zombies? I mean, like, how fun could that be? And I was really surprised when I played it. Um, George and Holly, it was their favorite game for a long time, and they actually introduced me to it. And then I bought a copy of it and played it a few times. Really had a lot of fun with it. There's goofy B-movie B stuff going on in Last Night on Earth. But. Zombie Side does it better. And Zombie Side killed Last Night on Earth for me. Um, now, there's a lot of the quirky things in Last Night on Earth that aren't really in Zombie Side. And Zombie Side, to me honestly doesn't even necessarily feel so much like a horror game as it does kind of an action game. Whereas Last Night on Earth did kind of feel like a horror game. And yet, having said that, I still feel that they were similar enough that after I started playing Zombie Side, I just did not feel like playing Last Night on Earth. And even as I talk about it now, I'd much rather play Zombie Side. And I actually, I think I sold my copy of Last Night on Earth years ago. Um, it was a fun game. I'm glad I played it. But Zombie Side to me is so much better, and it scratches that itch so much better. And of course, I've got tons of Zombie Side stuff now because it's such a fun game. Um, so Zombie Side, uh, any Zombie Side really, uh, any version of Zombie Side killed Last Night on Earth. Okay, coming down to the wire, I got two more games left. Um, this, this penultimate selection is a game that um, well I, years ago again when I'm getting into the wider world of board gaming and I was still looking at, at, at war games and light war games uh, the game I looked at that, that, that really got me excited and it was one of the games that really got me excited about Fantasy Flight games was Tide of Iron. A huge Tide of Iron fan. I got everything from Tide of Iron, including all the 1A stuff that was printed. Um, I, any, anything they put out there for Tide of Iron, I got. And I really enjoyed it. It's a super fun game. But there's there's a little bit of complexity there. Um, it's not terribly complex, but there's a, there's a little bit there. And um, I, as much as I loved it, I, I really got it at the table. Now, when I first when I first played it, we were playing Tide of Iron about once a month. We were playing it about once a month at least. But after, you know, we did that for nearly a year. But after a while, um, it just got to the table less and less. And I, But I always like, oh, I want to play it. I want to play it. And I, and I really had this desire to, to say, you know, one of these days, I'm going to get it back. I'm going to get it back because I love that game so much. But then just last year, I played Company of Heroes. And Company of Heroes, of course, by Bad Crow, it's based on a um, computer game, a video game. And now, uh, it just kind of totally scratches that itch. And I think it, it's still got the minis, so you still got the toy box factor that you had with toy, Tide of Iron. But um, just it, it's a cleaner game, it's a shorter game, it's a sharper game, and I pretty much get everything out of that game that I got out of Tide of Iron. Now, having said this, I'm still going to hang on to Tide of Iron. There may be a point where I give it another shot, but honestly, honestly, I'm thinking, why do I want to unpack that and, and deal with all that? And, and, and I, I'd rather play... Company of Heroes. It's just a, 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 I think it's just a better game. I think it's a tighter game. I love Tide of Iron, but Company of Heroes blows it out of the water, in my humble opinion. So uh, that is uh, Company of Heroes kills Tide of Iron. Okay, for my last selection here, 
And I said I'm not ranking these because I didn't know exactly how I would rank them, by how much I enjoyed the game that was doing the killing, you know. I didn't know. Um, but you'll see why I put this as the last one here. And this is because um, in, in Cody lore, there's a game that has a very special place in my heart. And this, the reason why it's there is because this is the game that I credit with um, my career, right? I am a military historian. I've got my PhD. I wrote my dissertation on the Second World War. I wrote my master's degree in the Second World War. I have read, at this point, perhaps thousands of books and articles on World War II specifically. I'm fascinated with that war. And that fascination, I really think I can trace back to when I was about 12 years old, I started playing Axis and Allies. You know, and I've, I've told this story before, so indulge me if you've heard it. But I remember one day, I was just looking at the board, and I remember thinking, you know, the, the game starts in the spring of 1942, when the, when the Axis were at their furthest geographical extent. And I remember looking at Europe, and virtually all of it was Nazi gray. And I remember thinking to myself, oh my gosh, they nearly won. How did they do that? How, how did they get that far? How did they do that? I remember thinking that question. And then I remember thinking, and how did we stop them? And the game, in a sense, was kind of my first real history lesson in World War II. Um, obviously, it's a game, and it's not real deep history or anything, but it, it, it gave me the, the gist of what happened, the logistical ideas of how that war was fought and why it was fought and the weapons that were used and and what have you and it and it gave me an appreciation for that war that i think i did not have prior to that so i played that game and i loved that game and when the when the first edition of access knowledge europe and pacific came out i picked those up and zach and i we played the crap out of them um i loved 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 access and allies so it pained me quite a bit when it got killed and it got killed a couple of years ago when I started playing War Room. War Room kills Axis and Allies. Now, War Room, uh, it, it, comes, it has a good pedigree because it is designed by Larry Harris, who designed Axis and Allies. And it's not the first time on this list we've seen a designer kill one of their own games, right? But Larry Harris created uh, War Room. And to me, War Room is kind of the ultimate epic, grand strategy World War II game that you can play in a day, right? And I mean literally a day. You know, you're playing a game, you're playing this game, and I don't think I played a game that was shorter than six hours, and I played several that were nearly ten, and some of the longer ones, we kind of decided it ended based on the way things were looking rather than playing them to completion. But the thing about that game, War Room, is it you get the same fill of Axis and Allies. You get the same feelings, you get the same, uh, uh, I don't know what's the word I'm looking for, you, you, you get that same uh, rush, you know, when you're the Germans and you're, and you're pushing into Russia, or, or, you know, when you're the Americans and you're trying to assault the Japanese islands, you know, or, or the British and trying to, to move against uh, the Japanese in the Pacific, or trying to figure out a, a strategy to maybe effectively bomb Germany or, or land troops on the continent. There's so much about this game that reminds me of Axis and Allies. It's got Axis and Allies DNA enmeshed in it. But then it takes it to the next level. It also borrows from diplomacy. I think, as I recall, Larry Harris actually had said something along the lines of he, he, he took some of the ideas from diplomacy where you have simultaneous orders. You all reveal your orders. And what's cool here is you bid for oil. And so you need the oil, but you got to bid it if you want to go first. And sometimes you need to go first, but you reveal your orders simultaneously, and then you can go ahead and start moving your troops. Um, but it really is, it's, it's, War Room is everything. When I was a kid playing Axis and Allies, War Room is everything I wanted Axis and Allies to be. I remember being a kid and saying, I wish there was like specific resources and regions. Well, this game's got it. It's got the, uh, the oil and the, and, the, and the tin and the other resources. It's, it's got that. And I, I remember as a kid, you know, really thinking, I, I wish like industrial bombing worked better. And I wish you had like convoy raiding. Well, this game's got it. Um, War Room's just got so much of what I wanted from that game and it 
does it even better than I imagined. I remember when I first saw it, I thought it looked, oh my gosh, that game look, looks freaking complicated. I don't know if I want to take that one on. And I remember the good people from Nightingale Games sent me a review copy, and I'm like, all right. I started reading the rules, and I'm like, I think I can do this. Man, one round, you, you pretty much got it all. You pretty much understand everything in the game. It is such a fun game. It is such a brilliant game. That's why it's my number one game of all time, War Room. But for all these reasons, War Room killed Axis and Allies. Well, ladies and gentlemen, so that's my list. That is 10 games that were killed by other games. Kind of an unusual uh, 10 list for me, top 10 list, dare I use that term. Um, but I, I really have been thinking about this one for a while. So I don't know, what do you think? Do you agree with me? Are these games dead to you too? Are they killed by these games? What other games do you have that you really loved that maybe got killed by other games? Let me know. I'd be excited to hear your, um, your ideas in the comments. Uh, I think... I, I'm always excited to hear what people think about a topic like this. Please, uh, so leave your comments here on YouTube, on Facebook, on uh, Twitter. Please subscribe, all that jazz. We really appreciate it. Also, check out my other channel, that is Cody Carlson PhD, where we talk about military history and books on history, fun things like that. Please subscribe to that channel, and please, uh, you know, like this uh, video, give us a thumb up this video. We really appreciate that as well. You know, ladies and gentlemen, I, I made an elevator joke at the beginning of this video. And I'm just curious, do you know why elevator jokes are always so good? Because they work on many different levels. <laughs>